All right, guys, so let's start talking about arrays. Now, we are no strangers to arrays. We've seen them in programs in the past, but um, in this week, we're going to take a deeper dive. But looking at the arrays worksheet here, which I should put my name on to, uh, remember, this is one of the things you'll be uh, uploading to me um, through a PDF, so make sure your name is on it as well. Um, let's talk about what we already know about arrays, okay? So this is something that we've sort of discovered over our time together. Um, and I can say this. So an array is basically a variable that holds a list of things, right? And those things can be um, just about anything you want to, okay? So they could be a, like, they could be a list of int, or they could be a list of string. Um, they could also be like lists of objects, okay? And we've seen this. Um, like we saw like the G uh, check button, for example, right? When we did the four of a kind uh, assignment, we had an array of four check buttons, and then we could use a for loop to travel through and see which ones were checked off, so we wanted to keep those dice and not roll them again. Okay, so it can hold a list of things. Um, why don't we also say this too? So each item has a, or has an address. Okay, it's also known as an index, okay? So I'm gonna call them indexes. Um, we also learned that they start at one, right? Starting, or zero rather, starting at location zero. Okay, now um, as we go through this, there's gonna be some other array terminology that we have to learn. So we'll fill this part out as we go along. So um, the first part here is stuff that we've already done before, but let's start here to set the stage for, for what we're gonna be learning. So declare an array to hold the average temperature for each month in a year, all right? so. Um, I'm going to go to my first example here, and I'm going to make this like a type double. Okay, so I'm going to say like uh, double temps, square bracket, equals new double 12. Okay, so that's basically how you make an array of any type. You just sort of give it a square brackets and you give it a size. Um, and then, you know, I can, I can either screenshot this or I guess I can just copy and paste this and put this in here as well. Uh, declare and initialize an array parallel to the first array and store the names of each month. So there's that word parallel, which kind of leans itself into this next um, definition here. Let's do the question first, and then we'll come up here and we'll try to get a good answer going for what we mean by parallel arrays. So initialize means that we can also like give the uh, list a starting value, or a starting list, I guess. And when we do that, guys, we don't have to give it a size. Now, we've seen this in the past before, too. Okay, and this is what this would look like, something like um, like string months, square bracket. So that is an array, equals, and instead of saying new string, we can use these uh, curly braces to initialize it to um, a list of, of strings. Okay, and we can do this on separate lines if we want to. Um, and we just have to make sure that we, um, you know, separate each thing with a comma. So what I'll do, guys, and I know this is taking a little bit of time, but um, if you could just um, give me like a three-letter code for each month, and assuming you know the months. If you don't, no worries. I got you covered. You can just sort of watch me do this as well. So um, I'm already in my talking halfway through the year. July, August, September, October, almost there, November, and December. Okay, so um, there we go. All right, so I've initialized the months to be uh, all of this here. Um, so I guess what I could do is I could probably, if I spread this out a bit, I can put this all in one line of code because normally um, that's what you would do, right? And that way I can just kind of copy and paste this to the uh, to the definition or to the worksheet rather. All right, so I'll just put this into here. Okay, now it may go to a second page or second line rather, that's okay. All right, so um, write code to allow the user to enter temperatures for all 12 months. Um, okay, so let's just come back to our um, code here. All right, and I'm gonna use a for loop, okay? So I'm gonna say like for, oops, uh, int x equals zero, x less than, and I could say 12 if I want to, because uh, it's 12 months, right? X uh, plus plus. Okay, and then I'm just going to go um, something like C dot print uh, enter average temperature temperature for 
and I'm going to tack on to that uh, months at location X. Okay, so this way, as part of the question, it's going to say enter the average temperature for January, for February, and so on, all the way through. I got an extra bracket there, I think. All right, so then I can say temps at location X equals C dot read double. Okay, and that will do the trick. Okay, so we're using this for loop to travel through the months, one month at a time, so we can print them here, and then as we go to each month, we're stopping and getting a temperature for that month um, in the other array, okay, in the separate array that's separate from the months array. All right, so this code here would be the answer. Now, you can either copy and paste this, guys, or, you know, if, if you prefer colorful screen captures, like in a lot of ways, I prefer to just um, have a, a picture of this code, right? So you can you can do it either way, okay? So, but I'll just, because I started this way, I'll just keep going this way. Um, all right, so I'll just uh, maybe give myself a bit more room down here. Okay, so uh, write code needed to display each month and its temperature in a list along with the average temperature at the bottom of the list. Assume we've declared double average equals zero. Um, okay, uh, so maybe what we will do is if we're going to be printing, well, I guess we can do it as we print as well. Okay, so um, I just want to I want to show like January and then the temperature and then February and then the temperature and then March and so on all the way down. Okay, so um, that's not too hard to do. So we'll use a separate for loop again because for loops are our best friends here to uh, travel through arrays, right? So I'll just do the same x equal to. Now I could say 12. I could also say this, guys, months dot length. Okay, so the length is a property of an array and it basically reads how many um, how many items are in the array. So that's going to equal 12, so I can use that as well, and that's going to be okay. So I'll just uh, leave it like that. Okay, so I'm just going to go, um, and I'll have a, a variable, I guess, up here called average, and then I'm going to set it to zero, and then I'm going to, as I print each uh, temperature, I'm going to add them into the average so I can calculate the average. So we'll go C dot print line. Um, we'll start with um, months at location X, plus maybe just like a little arrowy thingy here, and then plus uh, temps at location x. Okay, now in order to test this, we have to actually first go through and fill in numbers really quickly, and then it'll come back and print those back for us. All right, so while we're at it, we're gonna go AVG plus equals temps at location x, right, so that we can take each temperature and add it into this, this total, which is called AVG because we're gonna eventually divide it by 12. Okay, so we can do that down here. So we can go C dot print line, and then maybe we'll have like a like a bunch of dashes here to separate the list from the the average, and then we'll go C dot print line um, average temp uh, plus AVG. Now that's if I leave it like that, that's not quite right, right? Because the AVG is not the average yet. So down here I got to say AVG equals AVG divided by twelve or divided by months.length. Okay, and then when I come down here, it's gonna work properly. Okay, now if I'm worried about um, the two decimal places, I could also do a string.format, but I'll just leave it like that for now. Um, so all of this code here would go to answering that question about how to print it all out. Okay, so that will that will do the trick, I believe. Um, this isn't lined up, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so there we go. All right, so before we go um, any further, Let's uh, run this and, and test it out and see how it works, okay? And that'll give me a good chance to maybe uh, explain better what I mean by parallel arrays. Then we can come back up here and we can do this definition. All right, so um, we'll just do a compile on this and we will just give it a quick run. Okay, so I'm just gonna make up numbers here, guys, living based in living in Canada all these years. Um, before I do, though, I see one thing that I don't like, and that is, and this is just me being a bit of a stickler, um, enter average temperature for a month, whatever. And then what I always like to do is I like to finish off with um, one of these little arrowy prompty things here. Okay, that just makes it a little easier to separate the number I'm entering from the actual month. Okay, I know it's just a silly little thing, but I like to do that. So um, there we go. And we'll just run this now. There we go. Mouse is acting up a bit. All right, so um, I'll just say we start at like minus 1.5, and I can enter decimals because it's um, double values, right? Um, and then we're gonna go up to like, say, 2.5 in March, and then the temperature goes up to like, uh, I don't know, 8.7 in April, and then in May, well, we had a cold May this May, didn't we? 
uh, June we're getting warmer still so maybe we're up to like 22.8 uh, July is probably our hottest month, so I'll just say 25. August will be a little bit cooler, we'll say 21, and then it goes down from there. So we'll say 18, uh, we'll say 10 for October, we'll say 5 for November, and 1 for December. All right, so I just made those numbers up. Um, so if I press Enter now, okay, there's the, um, the printing of the months and pointing to the uh, temperature for that month. And then down here we have this average temperature, which has a crazy amount of decimals. We won't worry about that. All right, but what we're experiencing here too, guys, is what's called a parallel array, or parallel arrays, okay? So we have two arrays, months and temperatures, and they're parallel to each other. And this printout here that I did, guys, literally draws a picture of what that means, okay? So um, because we have two sets of data in separate arrays, where each location in one array matches up to the same in the other array, they're considered to be parallel, okay? So for example, um, March is location 2 in the months array. So temperature at location 2, 2.5, is the temperature for March. Okay, so that these two sort of color correspond to each other. Okay, now I'm using a for loop to do that, um, but I can also just do like a specific, like I can just go like this, like C dot print line, um, the average, average, in, and I'll just pick a random month here. I'll just say like months uh, seven, okay, plus um, is, right? And then I'll say plus uh, temps seven. Okay, so notice that seven is the same. It's parallel in both um, both arrays. Okay, so whatever stored, whatever stored in month seven, its temperature is at the same location in the other array. Okay, so seven, if you're wondering, would be five, would be August, okay? Because remember, January is zero, and it, you know if, if it helps you to do this, guys. And I I do this sometimes in school when we have like normal school going. Um, I get everybody to just sort of take a minute to do a comment and just kind of draw the index numbers below each month so that you can see. Now I'm not going to do all of them, but I'll just go as far as seven so you can see where I got seven for August, okay? So whatever the August temperature is that I enter is going to show up as temp seven. All right, so I'll just compile this and I'll run it, but this time I'll go a lot faster with my data entry just so we can get to that highlight of what I'm trying to prove here. Okay, so um, I'll just say like negative one, negative two, one, four, seven, 18, 23, 21, going back down now, 18, 15, uh, 12, and five, okay? So uh, the 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 av sorry the average in August is 21. So you can see in August I entered a 21, okay, which is seven in both arrays, the same location in both arrays. All right. So hopefully I'll throw all that into a blender and we'll come up with a nice definition here. Okay. So here's what I would describe parallel arrays. So first of all, it's got to be you have to have at least two, but you can have more than two. So two or more arrays. So you could have like a list of names, another list of addresses, another list of phone numbers. Right, where, where name seven lives at address seven and has phone number seven, right? But, um, so it can be more than two, but it's got to be at least two. So two or more arrays um, with uh, data that matches up um, at the same location, we'll say, in both arrays. Okay, so that's kind of a theoretical definition, okay? But I can say, like, for example, um, Feb, which is like month one, um, has temperature temperature at temp location one. Okay, so I, I think between the example we did and uh, me explaining it about 10 times now, um, you get the idea of, of what a parallel array is, okay? And they're going to come in big time when we go to do our final assignment next week. So um, you'll be seeing a lot more of these. All right, so let's keep going here. There's a little bit more, I think, to do. Um, write the code required to get and display a list of months higher than a given temperature. All right, so as we travel through, and again, we're going to use a for loop for this, um, we get to, um, you know, we're going to ask for a temperature and every, you know, everything that's over that temperature is going to be displayed, okay? Now, we could use a different type of for loop as well to travel through if we just want to read each temperature, all right? So um, let's just go back in here one more time, and um, we'll ask for, like, um, a cutoff temperature, okay? So I'm going to have, like, c.printline, 
or actually I don't even have to do that. I'm just going to arbitrarily say anything over 10 and, and below 10. Okay, so um, we'll go like this for uh, double T in temps. Okay, now the word this colon here means in. So I'm saying let T equal each temperature in temps. So it's a different way to travel through the array and we're assigning this variable T to each number as we go through. Okay, so um, now, if I want to also print the um, the months at the same time, then maybe this isn't the rest the best way to do it. So maybe I will go back to the old way. Okay, as I'm doing this lesson, I'm kind of thinking it through, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe that's not the best way to do it. Okay, so um, I'm just going to basically say, you know, something like if uh, temps at any location, like a given location x, is greater than we'll just say 10, um, then we're going to print sorry, we're going to C dot print line, um, and we'll do the same, like, we'll do this line here, okay, but only for the uh, temperatures that are over 10. Okay, so we'll print both the month and the temp if it's over 10, okay, so maybe just before that, we'll go like C dot print line, um, here is a list of months warmer than 10 degrees, okay, something like that. Okay, and then we'll use a for loop to decide whether or not to print the temperature as long as it reaches 10 or more, or more than 10. All right, so unfortunately, and this will be the last time I run this program, guys, but in order to get that far, I have to once again um, enter manually uh, the temperatures of the, of the year to, to get there. So I'm just going to like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, then I'll go up to 17, and you know I'll just keep going higher, and then I'll start coming down again. And five. Okay, so basically, based on what I've entered here, July through November should show up in my list, my final list. Okay, and so here it is. Here, um, here's a list of months warmer than ten. So there you go. All right, so we can do that sort of thing as well. So let's um, just copy this little piece of code here, and um, just put it there. Okay, so it says a given temperature. Um, it doesn't really matter what that temperature is. Um, I just use 10 as my as my uh, baseline, I guess. And you can see I've got a few little typos here. There we go. It's a little bit better. Okay. And unfortunately, when you copy and paste, it does take all the the tabbing with it, which makes the code a little bit ugly. But there, I'm just lining that up a little bit better. There, that looks a little bit nicer. All right, so that's just sort of a quick, and for most of the part, that was kind of review. We sort of knew a lot of that stuff already, but parallel arrays, it's kind of a new concept. Plus, it just gave us a chance to practice what we know about arrays already. All right, so that brings us to two-dimensional arrays, okay? So um, this is also like, um, you know, the, the other definition, 2D arrays, okay? So say we had like this kind of data where we wanted to store like this grid of data. Okay, so we're, we're storing like the, the real estate prices in two different cities and we're breaking it across like four different categories of, of housing, right? So obviously, depending on the kind of housing it is, it's going to be more or less expensive. And then Toronto versus Barrie, um, you can see the price difference there too. Now, these, these are a few years old. These prices are actually a little bit low now. Okay, but say we wanted to store all of that into a, what's called a two-dimensional array. Okay, so this is an array not just of rows, but of rows and columns, okay? Or another way of thinking of it, it's an array of arrays, okay? So we're gonna have an array of two arrays and each array is, or each item rather in the array is gonna be storing four additional items, okay? So there's an array of four in this array item and another array of four in this array item, okay? So it's basically two by four, okay? And that's how we're gonna basically declare it down here. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this, double prices, and we'll, we'll put this into the actual code of um, our BlueJay project in just a second. Okay, but now I'm going to include not one, but two square brackets. Okay, so I'm telling um, Java that I've got rows and columns here. Okay, equals new double. And just like a 1D array, I have to give it two dimensions. Now, the, or I have to give it two dimensions instead of just one. So the first dimension, guys, is the traditional, like how, how many items are in it. So there's essentially two items. There's a Toronto item and there's a Barry item. Okay, but then each of these two items contain four items as well. So it goes down first direction and then across second. So it's basically a two by four array. All right, so it's just a different way of organizing it. So it's still just one variable, prices, 
but because it's a 2 by 4 array, it can now hold um, basically up to eight different items. Okay, so write the code to fill the array with values one at a time. Okay, so we're basically we're going to prompt the user to enter the values using a loop. Now, with a regular uh, array, we use a for loop. With a 2D array, we use what's called a nested for loop. Okay, so it's basically a for loop inside of a for loop. All right, so I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. Let's start working on this in our in our um, array example here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to declare double prices, um, two square brackets, right, equals new double uh, two by four. Okay, and um, while I'm at it, maybe I will also create another array which will be parallel to this. So yes, you can have parallel arrays with like a 1D array parallel to a 2D array. Okay, so if that kind of blows your mind, um, let me just uh, show you what I mean. So string city equals, and I'm just going to initialize these as Toronto and um, Barry. Okay, um, just like that. Okay, and I can also have another array, why not? Um, which will also work in the other direction. So I'm going to have like string uh, type, okay, which equals um, basically a list of the four different types of dwellings. Okay, so we're going to have like um, detached, uh, semi, townhouse, and apartment. Okay, and this is just going to make it easier when we go to do the um, entering of the data. So I'll just go semi, semi detached. Um, townhouse, and we'll just call the last one a condo, which is sort of like a fancy apartment. All right, so now we have enough information that we can now fill the data. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. For uh, string C in city. Actually, no, I guess we can't do that. Okay, so we'll get to that eventually. Uh, for, we'll say index equals zero. Uh, yeah, it's probably better to do it this way first. X less than two, because I have like two cities, right? Um, X plus plus. Um, and then right away, I'm going to enter an inner loop. And I'm going to say for int y equals uh, zero. Y less than four, because I've got four going across. And then y plus plus. All right. So now inside here, I can basically ask for each type of dwelling. Okay, so why don't I start up here in the outer for loop and I'll go like this, c dot print line, um, enter house prices for, and then I'll just tack on to that city at location x. Okay, so this will either be Toronto or it'll be Barry. Um, and then, um, so that'll print, and then I'll come into my inner loop and then I'll just sort of print uh, the type. Okay, so I'll go like c dot print um, type at location y um, along with like maybe one of these little prompty things just like that. Okay, and now here comes sort of the, the golden piece of code. So I'm going to say prices at location x which is my city and y which is my type. Okay, equals c dot read double. Okay, and that's it. All right, so that's going to go and it's going to um, allow me to enter. So when it runs, guys, it's going to say enter house prices for Toronto, and then it's going to say uh, detached, and then semi, and then townhouse, then condo. Then it's going to come back out to the outer for loop and go down to Barry, and then back in and do the same, detached, semi, townhouse, condo. Uh, at least that's what it's supposed to do. Let me run this and, of course, make sure that it's going to actually do that. So I'll just go ahead and run this now. Okay, so enter house prices for Toronto, so detached, and I'll just make up numbers here, like 800,000. Uh, semi is 500,000. Townhouse is, I don't know, 400,000. And a condo is 250,000. Okay, so now I've traveled through the one row of Toronto, and now I'm going back up to the top of the loop and back in to Barrie to do the same thing. Maybe next time I'll do it without the thousands. I'll just put in the short forms for it. Um, and again, I'm just making up numbers here, guys. So and there's no way they're, they're that cheap. Okay, now, unfortunately, that's all the program does right now. 
uh, when I press enter, it basically is done. Um, so the data has been filled into the array, but then as soon as the program is done, the array and the data inside of it die. Okay, but at least we got to go through and enter all that data. All right, so now I didn't need to have separate arrays necessarily for the city and the type, but I thought, why not put that in just so that it can be added to my print statement so it makes it easier to sort of understand what I'm what I'm entering. All right, so I'm actually going to like copy all of this stuff because I think this is actually a good way to do what I was trying to do. And you saw it worked out pretty good there, right? So we'll just kind of go like that. Okay, but it is filling in the values one at a time. Okay, and this is the big line here, right? I'm just going to bold that. I'm going to make that a different color so you can see like, hey, this is kind of new, right? The 2D array. All right, and I think we know now enough that we can come up here and we can like do a little bit of a definition here. Okay, so a two-dimensional array, we'll say like it's an array that is organized by row and column, okay, into we'll say like a grid of data. Okay, um, another way of thinking of it, um, um, it uh, ends up becoming an array with another array inside it. Okay, which is essentially what, what we're working with here. So we have an array of two things, an array of Toronto prices and an array of Barry prices. The Toronto prices array has an array of four values for the different types of dwellings, and then Barry has the same. Okay, so we end up with two dimensions instead of one. Okay, but, but just like a 1D array or a regular array, um, uh, the numbers start at zero, right? And I've already put that here so you can see that. Um, so Toronto is, is city zero, Barry is city one. Um, you know, this value here is like one, two. So condo prices in Barry are prices at location one, two. So you do, like when you're dealing with this data in here, you do have to provide two dimensions, the city dimension first, and then the type dimension second, in this case, right? But it could be a, a 2D array of any type of information. All right, so uh, hopefully that makes sense, um, you know, from where you're sitting. So write code needed to calculate the average cost in each city. So this, again, would be a good way to sort of travel through a nested for loop. Now, we don't need to deal anymore with the city and the type. We can just sort of work only with the prices now in, in this. Okay, so we're going to use a two, like a, sorry, a nested for loop to go through and, and sort of get the average cost for each. Oh, average cost in each city. Okay, so I basically want to get an average of these numbers, and then I want to get an average of these numbers. Okay, I can do that too. Um, so we'll add that to our program here. So uh, so we'll just go like four uh, int x uh, equals zero, um, x less than two. So you're still going with the outer dimension as your outer for loop. And then we'll just go in here. Okay, and we're going to have like two variables up here. So I'm going to have a variable, and I'll just make them int because everything else is, oh no, the prices are double, aren't they? Okay, well then I guess I'll make these double as well. Could have been int as well. So double, um, we'll call it like t average equals zero, and that's for the Toronto average, and then double b average equals zero. Okay, so um, as we go through our inner array here, guys, like four int y equals zero, and this is the one that's going to the second dimension of four, uh, y less than four, uh, y plus plus. All right, so we're either adding each value to the Toronto average or the Barry average. How do we know which one? Well, it depends on the value of x. So when x is zero, we're dealing with the Toronto numbers, right? So again, look up here, uh, where is it? So when x is zero, this is the zero with row, I guess is a good way of saying it, and that's the Toronto row. And then when x is one, it's the one row. I won't say the first row, because this is really the first row, but row one, um, and that's these numbers here. So what we can use is a little if statement. Okay, and this is sort of a hacky way of doing it, but it'll work. So we're going to say if x equals 0, then we're on Toronto. Right? So we're going to add to the Toronto average. So I'm going to go um, TABG plus equals prices at location x, y. Okay, so notice I have to like add, address it that way. Um, if it's not 0, then it must be 1. So else we're on x equals 1. So then it's going to be uh, BABG. Right, plus equals prices at location x, y. All right, and that should do it. Okay, so now depending on, on where we are, we're getting one or the other. Um, actually, I lie, that's not quite it. So we're going to say TAVG 
equals TABG divided by 4, because we know there's four values in there, right? And the same with the Berry average, right? We'll do the same thing. So I'll just paste it down here, and I'll change that to B, and change that to B. And then, of course, it doesn't make any sense to do all this unless we are going to print it. So we'll finish off with, you know, C dot print line Toronto average is uh, plus TABG, right? And then we'll just copy that and we'll paste it to the next line here. And change that to be a semicolon, change that to be a B, and change that to be the word berry. Okay, and then that should work. Now, unfortunately, I got to enter eight numbers again before this will work. But I will round it off, uh, oh, sorry, I'll chop off or truncate the thousands. Okay, so it'll go a little bit faster. So I'll compile that, and we will run it here. Um, okay, so detached, I'm going to say 900, which means 900,000, right? A semi is, we'll say, 750. A uh, townhouse is 500, and a condo is 425. I know these are just made-up numbers, but... In Barry, a detached is, say, 600, a semi is, say, 450, a townhouse is 400, and a condo is 375. Okay, and there we go. So the Toronto average is 643 and 42625,000, right? Um, so I don't have a calculator to verify that, but, you know, rest assured I can pretty much tell you that. Like, the 643.75 is an average of the first four numbers, and this is the average of the second four numbers. All right? Okay, so that is done. So let's just take that code and we'll put it into here. Okay, um, if you want to print as well, you can add that to it as well. So I will put that down in here. All right, so there it goes. It's all kind of indented, but I guess that's okay. It still works. Um, and, oh, that's it. Okay, yeah, I forgot we're on a short version of this, aren't we? So that is the last question. Okay, good. Well, this video is running kind of long anyway, so that's probably just as well. Um, all right, so um, that's it for the note, guys. So if you wouldn't mind saving this, um, like downloading it, it saves automatically because it's Google Drive, right? But if you could also just um, download as a PDF, right? And then you can, you can upload it to the Dropbox along with the programs we're writing for this week. Okay, so in our next video, guys, let's start tackling the program. So the next video, we'll deal with the console program. And then in the final video, we'll do the p-applet. All right, so we'll see you in the next video.